After the Lord was baptized, the heavens were opened, and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And the voice of the Father thundered, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, at the baptism of Jesus Christ, Christ is named as the beloved Son of God and commissioned to begin his ministry. May the holy waters remind us of the grace of our own baptisms when we were claimed as God's beloved and anointed to serve his people. Let us call to mind the times of our faults and ask God for his love and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I was greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin all ye angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me until the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us gather all of our prayers together into one. Almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ has been baptized in the river Jordan and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit, and he shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Give to the Lord, you sons of God. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Adore the Lord in holy attire. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty, the voice of the Lord is majestic. The God of glory thunders, and in his temple all say, Glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood, the Lord is enthroned as king forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proclaimed to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, 
beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The heavens were opened and the voice of the Father thundered. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us step back in time for just a moment. Hard to believe, but a year ago this weekend, we began a journey together. We journeyed through Advent, through Christmas, through the Epiphany, and we celebrated the baptism of our Lord. And for the most part, we were determined to worship in an unfamiliar place our school gymnasium. I was recently reflecting upon my words of last year, and I quote, reflecting upon the relationship between John and Jesus, their individual baptisms, and their significant roles in our faith, may this be a time for all of us to take part in those powerful words spoken by John. He must increase. I must decrease. I continued by saying, we will praise God in a humbler way, in a humbler setting. The important aspect is to remember that we, the people, are the church. Over these next six months, we will will be offered the gift of being humble during our worship, the challenges to be more attentive to the word of God, and we will be provided with the chance to decrease our worldly distractions so that the grace of Jesus' spirit may increase in us. This was the weekend we went over to the school. John's baptism, my brothers and sisters, is one of a ritual repentance and cleansing. When people walked toward John, they entered into the waters in a very public way, And as they walked towards John, they were proclaiming in his or her way that they desired to be washed clean of sin and of its effects. Jesus, on the other hand, has nothing to repent, 
But when Jesus goes, undergoes his baptism, it is easy for us to understand that the baptism of Jesus is an act of solidarity with humanity. It indicates Jesus' willingness to be with humanity in all of our woes for the sake of winning the victory of salvation for all of us. John the Baptist paved the way for Jesus' ministry. And through John's preaching, he reminds us to repent and to believe in the gospel. This is a profound moment of decision. The closing of one door and the opening of another. The turning away from sin, from death and despair, towards love, towards new life, and towards hope. That call is for each and every human person because each and every person is made in the image and in the likeness of our God. A God who is love, a God who has breath life into our existence of our precious lives. You and I gather in the midst of our one year anniversary, reminding ourselves of the tremendous love of God and even in the darkest depths of the darkest and hardest of hearts, that spark of divine love is waiting to be reawakened in each and every one of us. As John the Evangelist tells us, light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. As Jesus comes out of the water during his baptism, his face is refreshed, his face is cleansed, and as the water drips down from his face, the heavens are torn open so that the Spirit, like a dove, descends upon him. And during those very few moments of new birth, from the living water, a voice acclaims from the heavens, You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. This very weekend, on the feast of the baptism of the Lord, Jesus challenges all of us to recall the meaning of our own baptismal promises and to live our lives worthy of that very call. Repent and believe in the gospel. This call from Jesus is extended to all. No one gets to sit this one out. No one is beyond the need for healing. No one is beyond the grasp of God's healing love. We have seen that this year. No one can escape it. We can turn away from it, but if we want it, God is willing to give it to us. And you and I as Christians, those who bear the name of the loving presence of Christ in the world, this world as it is right now, we must pray earnestly for and participate in this new campaign of light, the light which comes from the birth of Christ, the light which breaks into the darkness, and the light of love moving in every one of our heartbeats. This past Wednesday, we read from the Holy Scripture from John the Evangelist. Beloved, it is God who is love, who also, we also must love one another. If we love one another, God remains within us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. If we have come to know, and if we have come to believe in the love of God has for us, then you and I will live. As the evangelist tells us, this is the commandment we have from God. Whoever loves God must love their brother and sister. Today we hear, for the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever or for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. 
And the victory that conquers the world is our Christian faith. The long year of 2020 will go down in history with great significance, and people of their own freedom will be able to recall the details they choose. In our eyes, in my eyes, it is a moment when Catholics were prevented from gathering around the Eucharistic table, when we were prevented from being fed by the body of Christ. And as we began the year of 2021, just a few days ago, as our elected congressional leaders gathered in our nation, let it not go unnoticed that at the very end of their prayer, they replaced the word amen, which means truly. The word amen, which means it is true. The word amen, which means let it be so. This word was compromised by the changing of our culture and our society with the word, a woman. My brothers and sisters, every act of violence, whether it be physical, emotional, or spiritual, every act of violence comes from the power and the guidance of one individual, and that is Satan. During a weekend when we are encouraged to speak about peace, it cannot go unnoticed that the actions which we have witnessed in our world, especially in our nations, are actions of evil. We hear from 1 John chapter 4, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And so one who fears is not yet in perfect love. My brothers and sisters, what we gain in fear, we lose in hope. Everyone who watched Jesus come out of the water that very day were witnesses to the spirit in the form of a dove. And looking at the dove, we find the symbol of peace. The dove going all the way back to Noah's time, when the dove brought an olive branch to Noah as a symbol that the end of the great flood and a new commandment between God and humans has begun. We hear in Genesis 8, and it tells us that this is the covenant promised never again to strike down every living being as I have done before. We have a God of love, and Jesus receives an affirmation in his identity of God's begotten Son at his baptism. The Son who is anointed to bring God's spirit and peace and all love to people. As we look toward this year of the Holy Family, through the intercession of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, as we look for guidance this year, what does that look like for you? What needs to change? How will you live it, starting from this moment and each day of this year? May God have mercy on all of us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Trusting in the faith we have come to believe, together we profess it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life for the world to come. Amen. God our Father has given us rebirth through the water and the Holy Spirit. As his children, may we always do what is pleasing in his eyes and make our prayers for the needs of all. For all the baptized who make up the mystical body of Christ and those preparing for baptism that we may reflect in our lives and actions the image of Jesus to others and continue to deepen their faith as they grow in their knowledge and love of him. Let us pray to the Lord. For our newly elected officials, that they may perform their duties honorably and with integrity while holding a special concern for the least whom they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who promote the dignity of all human life, from conception to natural death, that they may remain persistent in their work of mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For women facing challenging pregnancies, may God look graciously upon them and grant them strength, hope, and community of support. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially the Wayland family, may they soon come face to face with Jesus their Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. For the special intentions of this Mass being offered for Teresa O'Brien, let us pray to the Lord. Let us remember in our prayers our seminarians as they return to their schools for their academic year. We pray for an increase in the vocations of priesthood and religious life, and for those special prayers which we hold in a special place in our hearts. Pray to the Lord. Loving God, in your mercy, bless us with the spirit of humility and a true desire for peace and justice. We, your sons and daughters, ask this through Jesus Christ, in whom we are whom we are well pleased. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord 
Lord, wash me from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him, who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know Christ your servant, has been anointed with all the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the body of Christ can be saved for eternal life.
Through the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, let us pray for peace in our hearts, peace within our families, and the protection against Satan and evil in our country. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world. Our Lady, Queen of Peace. Remember, never lose hope. Jesus is always there with us. Two things. One, if you look out at the windows, it's still light outside. So we're changing, it's, it's coming. And then two, just before you leave, just take a moment once again to enjoy the beautiful um, spirit of our Christmas because it all comes down on Monday. I know. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go forth to share the Gospel. God bless you, everyone.